Hello everyone, welcome to lecture. So today we will learn about um, the different type of comparison test and also we will learn about the alternating series test. Okay, so you have in total 19 problems in lab 10. So in the first type, in the first type, you have to use comparison test first. I mean the direct comparison test for all the problems. And for few of them, you will not be able to apply the direct comparison test. So in that case, you have to use the limit comparison test, okay? And you must also indicate the test name which you are using to solve the problem, okay? So that's your first type. In the second type, you have a bunch of problems given. You need to find whether it is absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or divergent, okay? We will study about uh, these three in detail. In the third type, you have an alternating series given here, given in the below uh, problems. You also have a theorem given here. Not an actual theorem, but you have a slice of it. So you have a formula here. This is to find the error estimate of the given alternating series, okay? So using this formula, you're supposed to find the error estimate. So they will give you uh, some limitations like for in, the, uh, in B, they're asking you to find the error estimate of only the first four terms, okay? So question number 17, 18, and 19 are of similar type. So I will be doing one among these uh, and also a few from type two and type one. Okay, okay, so let's get started with the problems. Uh, before that, do remember that you have lab nine due tonight. If you are not able to find the link, email me immediately, okay? I will be responding to you. So email me immediately if you do not find a link in the Blackboard. If you are emailing me about this after the due date, I will not be considering your assignment, okay? So be careful about that. So first problem of the first type, uh, this is just an example, one divided by two n cube plus n minus one. So let us apply the limit comparison test. So you know that, you know, right? Uh, in the limit comparison test, limit n tends to infinity an by bn is what we need to find. Now, in this sequence, uh, we will choose an as the original sequence. So that is one divided by 2n cube plus n minus one. Okay, now the question is, how do we choose bn? Now the sequence bn follows the p series test. So in a p series test, always bn will be one divided by n, always to the power of p. Finding p depends on the problem given. Okay, now, how do I find p? Simple uh, trick here, I can say a logic. So you have to take the highest power of the numerator. In our case, it is one. In the denominator, what which is the highest power? It is n cube, right? So I will divide it by n cube. So this is my bn where p is, where p is three. 
okay you need to divide the highest power of the numerator divided by lowest power of the uh, highest power of the denominator okay term i can say highest power term now now that we know what is an and bn we will just divide those both and apply the limit an divided by bn will be equal to limit n tending to infinity an is 1 divided by 2n cube plus n minus 1 and you are going to multiply that with bn equal to 1 by n cube so since bn is in the denominator that acts as a reciprocal so n cube divided by 1 Okay, now just take n cube common um, from both numerator and denominator. So limit n tends to infinity n cube divided by, I'll take n cube from the denominator. So I get 2 plus 1 divided by n square minus 1 divided by n cube okay so these two get cancelled now when you apply a limit as n tends to infinity these become zero right because one over infinity is zero now what is the leftover term leftover term is one over Okay, now how do we how, how do we decide whether the series is converging or diverging? Now remember, uh, I know that when we find a limit, it is converging to a finite number. So you can say it is converging, but do not depend or decide only on this term. Mainly, we need to check whether bn is converging or not so according to the p series test summation bn is equal to 1 by n cube that is p equal to 3 here so if p is greater than 1 it will definitely converge now according to comparison test if bn is converging then an is definitely converging by the test mean. Okay, that's how you have to solve for the first type. Do you want me to um, explain you with another example of the same type? Or shall I move on with the second uh, type of problems? Okay, then I will move on with the second type. Now here, uh, 
for this, you can apply any type of test. It could be integral test. Um, it could be a limit comparison test or just a direct comparison test, anything, even the ratio test, okay? It depends on the problem. So let's see. Um, So let us consider summation n equal to 2 to infinity minus 1 to the power of n divided by n ln of n, the whole cube. So I will be using integral test. We have uh, studied this in the previous lab. Now, remember, to apply this test, a function or a series must be positive, continuous, and also decreasing, right? Okay, now let's see. Now, when I say decreasing, if it is divided by one, it could, in the denominator, it could be anything. Let's say, let's take it as a. So, a could be anything. Okay, even if it is a very large number, it is fine. So if it is divided by one, then it is definitely decreasing. Okay, now let us check whether this function satisfies all the condition of the integral test. Okay, so as you can see, you have an alternating test or the alternating series here. So let us keep that on the other side, and we will consider a n as one divided by n into ln of n the whole cube. Now, this function is definitely positive, continuous, because why is it positive? That's because we are starting n from a positive number. So it has to be positive. If you are starting from, let's say, negative two, then this becomes negative two ln of negative two, right? So you definitely have a negative number. Now, since we are starting from a positive number, we can say it is positive, continuous, and also decreasing. Why? Because it is divided by one. Okay, now that I can apply a limit comparison test, now, you can see the limit is from 2 to infinity. Now, if you uh, integrate the function from 2 to infinity minus 1 to the power of n, let's take it as 1. Let us omit the alternating series for now. Now, uh, this becomes an improper integral. So, how do you solve improper integral? You, inter you introduce a limit and a variable t that is tending to infinity, and then you integrate from 2 to t, 1 divided by n ln of n, the whole cube. Now, here you can apply u substitution. So, you can take u is equal to ln of n. So you get limit t tends to infinity ln of two. Limits change when you apply um, u substitution. So ln of t, one divided by u cube into Now, if you uh, integrate and apply the limits, you get one divided by two, ln of two, the whole square. Okay, now, as you have seen, when we apply the infinity limit here, we get a finite number. So we can easily say that it is converging, but 
we still have to include the alternating series, right? So we can conclude that since an is um, converging, we can conclude that the alternating series n equal to two to infinity minus one to minus one to the power of n n ln of n the whole cube is absolutely convergent. If an is converging, then we say it is absolutely convergent. Okay, so let us uh, move on with the last type, example three. In example three, we need to find the error estimate of the given alternating series. So let me um, explain this in the manual itself. Okay, so we have in total 17, 18, and 19. Okay, three problems for the third type. Now let me explain uh, the 19th type. And before that, I will give you a hint for 17. Okay. Now you have a formula given here. Now the question is, you, you also have alternating series given. Okay, this is the problem, 17th problem. Now they're asking you, you just have to expand the alternating series error estimate, alternating series error estimate for the first four terms. Okay, so you need to write the error estimate for the first four terms. Observe the formula. You have summation AP, that is the, word, the um, exact um, function. So you have AK here minus, the second term is written in, an, in the expansion form. Since we just need only four terms of this series, we write one, two, three, four, okay? only four terms. The minus sign here is because of the formula. Let me write this way. So this is summation A of K, K equal to one to infinity. And that is given by sine of one for the 17th problem. Now the negative sign here, we have to include that here. Now the second term is summation k equal to one to n a of k and one, let me use the other color, a of k, k equal to one to n. So this becomes one minus one divided by three factorial plus one divided by five factorial minus one divided by seven factorial, okay?
Now, all we have is the last term en plus one. That's what we need to find. Got it? Now, here in the B, they want you to find out the actual difference. That is, you just have to do this in the calculator. Subtract sign of one with the numbers given here. When I say the factorial, uh, you can you have this uh, symbol in the calculator, so you can use easily do. But this is what the factorial sign means. If they are asking you to find three factorial, that is three into two into one. Okay, and if it is four factorial, you just keep on expanding three cross two cross one. So this is like a product. 5 factorial is 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Okay? That's what factorial means. Okay. Now, let us go with the 19th problem here. In the, likewise with the 17th problem, you need to find the alternating series error estimate for the first four terms. So how do we write that? With absolute sign following the formula, one over E minus, you just have to write whatever there in the problem. So you need first four terms, you have one, two, three, four, right? So that is going to be one minus one plus one by two factorial minus one by three factorial. That's it. And this has to be less than a n plus one. Right? Now, what is n here? So what is n here? n is equal to four right because we have first four terms so n is equal to four but a n plus one will be equal to a four plus one that is a to the power of five or a five agree now what is the fifth term in the sequence the fifth term will be equal to any guess so you have a one a two let me write it you have a1, a2, a3, a4. What is a5? What is the fifth term? What do you think it will be? This is one plus one over two minus one over three plus what comes after three? If no one answers this question, then I will assume that everyone is sleeping. Very easy answer. What comes after three? Well, I have to teach you one, two, three, four, first time. Okay, so the answer is one by four factorial. Okay, that will be the fifth term in the given alternating series. Okay, that's A. And what about B? So B is of same, uh, a similar type, but they want you to find for the first 20 terms. Now, you don't have to write all of them, uh, you can write in this way. 
1 over e, that's the first term in the whole sequence, minus bracket. You can just write S20. That will mean it is, it is having till 20, okay? You can just write as S20. If you have 25 given here, then you will just write 25. Just to, uh, just not to write everything and mess up. So it's better to no, give a notation to that. Now this will be less than one over 20 factorial. Okay, you can find by expanding this, this is a n plus one, or this is a 21, the 21st term in the sequence. Okay, that is B. Now in C, you need to find after, or how many terms are required, or I can say, what is K? You need to find what is the value of K such that, the error estimate has to be less than 0 0.0005. Okay. In other words, 1 over k plus 1, the whole factorial has to be less than 0 0.0005. Now, your work is to find the k. I'm not going to do the whole problem here. Uh, I have taught you how to do A, B, and it's your work to do the C. You need to find the value K by using this information. Okay. So that is all about your lab 10. I think I have uh, pretty much covered everything here. Yes. So you know, even the 18th problem is similar to 17. You need to find for the first 10 terms and for the first 20 terms, okay? I think, um, yes. So this is all about lab 10. Um, so make sure, uh, you complete or you at least attempt for all the problems, okay? Do not leave anything blank. Just try to, I uh, mean, just try to uh, make an attempt on solving the problem. So I have explained you with uh, two examples. So for the first type, you can use any comparison test. In the second type, you can use any, um, test to show it as convergent or divergent. And for the third type, you have a formula given. You need to find uh, the error estimate for the um, given terms, even for the first four terms or maybe like the first 20 terms likewise, okay? So you have in total 19 problems and again, no MATLAB code, okay? All I need is the detailed hand calculations. Do not just write the problem and the answer or, or some of them are even, um, they are just writing like a theory. Do not do that. You need to explain in detail with the steps. Okay, that's, uh, that's how I can grade it. Because your lab, each and every lab is for 100 total points. So you need to explain in detail each and every problem. So that will complete lab 10. If you have any questions, uh, you can stay on Zoom. If not, uh, we can meet in the next week.